Hi, I'm Re from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel and another vlog, but a vlog with a little bit of a difference this time to my normal content. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes. I'm going to show you how I put together my YouTube videos. I will be sharing some of my top tips and tricks that I use to create my videos. Also in this vlog, I am unboxing some new kit, which I'm really excited about. You may or may not know, depending if you're new here. YouTube is my job, so I feel like investing in making my videos better, with better video and better audio, is important to bring you a better experience through my videos, and I feel that that's the way that I can help my channel to grow. If you are new here, welcome. Please subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 7 p.m. My usual content is more kind of day in the life of a mum kind of stuff, speed cleaning, hauls, that kind of thing. I hope you will stick around and love all of that. So we're gonna start by kind of talking about how I set up. I tend to vlog with my camera um, which will be my new camera actually, which we're gonna look at in a second. And a tripod, I use a pixie tripod most of the time, but I have got a new one in this kit, which has just arrived. So I will show you that in a second. What I tend to do, and what's really important if you are filming or if you are just looking to take nice photos or nice photos for your children, is you find the light. So what I'm doing at the moment is I am facing a big window in my kitchen. So I'm gonna turn around and show you. I'm facing this big window. So obviously if the window is behind me, you can see that like, my face is really dark. If I face the window, you can see, so I'm, I'm quite close to the window now. So I always try and find the light, which was a big mistake I used to make in a lot of my early videos and you find a lot of people just make this mistake generally. Natural light is amazing. I have some other lights and things, which I will show you later in the video, that I use if the lighting isn't amazing. But the best, best thing you can do if you want to take better photos, you want to take vlogs or anything like that, you just want to take like nice photos of your on your phone of your kids, find the light. So that's my top tip, number one. Now the next thing I do is I tidy up my background. My kitchen is not too bad, but when I am editing this later, this cloth will annoy me. Because I've got, can you see, I've got like nice clear countertops and one big splodge of paint. So what I tend to do is just make sure that there's nothing kind of distracting in the background. Not so much if I'm vlogging, because if I'm just doing like a day in the life vlog, then it's like whatever, you know, it's it's whatever's in the background is in the background. But if I was doing a video where I was kind of talking to camera and doing tips and things, this would really bug me. So I would just, you know, I'd just, just throw it over there. And now suddenly it looks neater. Whether it's just for photos or you're actually filming sit down videos, just have a little think about your backdrop because it's not until you go to edit it afterwards you'll find those things that annoy you. The other thing I often do is I say, Alexa, turn kitchen lights on. And I think that makes a nicer backdrop as well. My husband's always going mad because he's like, why are the lights on in the middle of the day? It's because I'm filming, okay? It's because I'm filming. So that is another thing I tend to do. Just a little thing you may notice in my videos, I tend to have those lights on, even if it's daylight. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you guys down on this upturned laundry basket because I have got a bigger, taller tripod, but if I'm just vlogging, it seems like a bit of a pain to bring it out. I will explain later when I would use different tripods and things. Um, just to clarify, by the way, if you want to start your own YouTube channel, you don't need all this stuff. You can just start with your smartphone. But I've kind of built up to all this stuff because, you know, it's my job. So I'm doing it day in, day out. I find it helps. Right now we're going to unbox my lovely new camera. So I'm gonna put you down on here. The camera I bought when I relaunched my YouTube channel back in February 2019, when I had 200 subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone that's joined me along my journey since then. Um, so was the Canon G7X Mark II. And I literally bought that because every YouTuber that I knew was using that camera. So I've bought this one, which is kind of the next model along. And I've bought this in a vlogger kit, which comes with some bits and pieces inside, which I'm so excited to look at. The reason I wanted to upgrade to this camera is it had the option to input audio devices, which means you can use an external microphone and up level your sound. But it also came with this, which I'm really excited about. This is a tripod, but it has also got a remote control on it, meaning I don't have to reach around the back of the camera to start and stop. I can do it remotely. Let's open this up and take a look. This came with an SD card 
I do have a number of SD cards and I identify them with different colored stickers on them and then I call them by the names. So I've got like pink, purple, blue, whatever. And then when I plug it into my computer, that's what the SD card is called so I can differentiate which one is which. We've got an instruction book. We've got the camera. <gasps> oh, it's so pretty. Ooh. The first thing I'm going to do is stick a screen protector on here. I always have tempered glass screen protectors on anything like this. So on the screens, on our phone screens, anything like that. It, they're only a few pounds and they will save you so much hassle and so, many, so much damage. Charger cable charger and battery and a strap now i believe these are compatible with the batteries from my last camera of which i bought a few spares it's always worth having spare batteries but the other bonus of this camera is i can actually plug it directly into charge so if i was filming a really long sit down youtube video i could actually plug it in and just run it off the mains which i've not been able to do previously so that's quite cool now let's have a look at this tripod thingy. Ooh. Ooh. Now this is a cold shoe mount, which means that when I'm sticking things like external microphones on the side, then you can stick them onto there. That is also a cold shoe mount bracket, I believe. Ooh, cool tripod. Ooh, how do you do this? How does this work? I have no idea how this works. Do you press this button? Oh, hang on, maybe this, ah, like that. Ah, got it. There we go, and then that locks in. Remote control. Oh dear, I'm pressing things. So that goes into here. Oh, how cool is that? So I can start and stop recording. Normally, in order to start and stop recording on these cameras, you have to reach around the back. I should be able to do that from the tripod. So when I am vlogging like this, imagine the camera's on top, then I can should I should just be able to do that. That is kind of cool. I don't have a case that I have around my camera all the time to protect it, but I have got this kind of neoprene one. I did have um, like a proper Canon one, like a leather one before, but I found that if it had anything on it, anything stuck on it or whatever, you couldn't use the case. So this one, you can put the camera in upside down with a tripod still attached and it still protects most of the camera. As much as I want to keep playing with my camera, my alarm has just gone off to remind me to go and get Zara, my youngest, so let's go and pick her up and then we can carry on with all this. Let's talk a little bit more about how I put together my videos. Just saw a few clips with a little bit of music at the top of me getting ready to go, got my drink ready, popping my wellies on. And the idea is it just kind of sets the scene for what's going on in the day. So I try and include bits like that to kind of keep it moving and bring you along with me really. I hope it helps you feel like you're with me and you understand what's going on. I also feel like it's quite important to try and make sure I'm not just filming a whole video set in one place. So by kind of talking to you while we're on our way somewhere, it kind of breaks it up. Hopefully keeps it interesting. I've got my beautiful Zara from school now, who's going to tell me in between mouthfuls of her lunch about her peak and pit, aren't you? Did you have a good day in school? Yeah. Were there any pets? Mama. Any did anything make you sad? No oh well that's good news. I've been doing work this morning. We been doing a pattern. You were doing a pattern? That sounds amazing. That sounds so much fun. Now one thing I'm going to jump back to sharing with you about how I film these vlogs. We've stopped uh, on our way home to I film miss Zara. You, Mama. Oh darling, I miss you too. But what I've done is I've actually chosen a shady part of it's like one shady part behind the tree because if i was here you'd see it look really overexposed zara would be squinting so i've chosen a one very small shady patch to stop and film in because then you get a better picture than if i was over here so while we like to find the light we don't want too much light 
especially direct sunlight. So we like light, but not in your face squinty sunlight. Isn't that right, Oz? No. No. Should we go home now? Mmm. Zara and I are back home now, aren't we, baby girl? And I have to update the firmware on my new camera. This is basically a bit like when you've got an iPhone and Apple launches an update, only it's a bit more fiddly. There was an autofocus issue, apparently, when these cameras came out, the G7X Mark III, that is. And apparently this firmware update fixes it. But I have to manually do this firmware update in order for my new camera at the box to work as I wanted to. So I found a YouTube video. Um, I'm just gonna have a go at doing that. Are you yeah, gonna help? I have put the firmware already onto this SD card from my computer. Now hopefully, whoop, can we go on for the first time? Ooh, set the date. Ooh, set the date. What's the date? What is the date? This is proving to be more difficult than I originally thought. It said that the card couldn't be read. So I've reformatted the card. We're gonna try and download the software again. I just want to play with my new toy, but these little techie bits <laughs> are always the bits that get me. I've gone to plan B and I've actually downloaded the instructions. Oh, yay, this is working now, update. Yes, I did it, I think. Firmware's updating, that means I can use my camera soon. Zara, are you excited that mummy can use her new camera? We're also going to experiment with external microphones. I have to show you her face. Are you excited? No, not even slightly excited. Isn't it nice and exciting to have like mummy's cameras and things to play with for her YouTube channel? Play with. Well, not really play with, do work with. Play with. Play, play. with. <laughs> play. Now trying to figure out exactly how my camera works. I need to get this remote control hooked up to actually shoot stills. I've managed to get it to start and stop recording, which is great. I just have to press this thing. But I cannot for the life of me figure out how I'm supposed to get it to do stills. Most of it is even in English. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, there's the setting on the camera I have to change and then it works. Zara, smile for my mate so I can get this to work. Oh, it's not working. Is that working? It's not working. Ah. Turn it Don't to... break that. Ready. Thank you. Here, Shooting mode. <gasps> thank you. I don't think my hand is going to fit in there, but thank you so much. It's a beautiful bracelet. Oh. So I thought I had this working. Hang on, have I got the remote on the right setting? <gasps> that would help. It did it. I've got to put the remote on the right setting. It did it. It did it. Did it. Ready. Yeah, the remote was on the wrong setting. Ready. Note to self switch remote. Ready. Not just worry about the camera setting. Switch remote settings over Ready. there Ready. too. Ready. We're getting there. This is going to be a bit of a learning curve. I haven't even added a microphone yet. Some time later, I am still experimenting. I have found the full instructions online. I did reach the actual instruction manual until I realised this was just a quick start guide and the bit in English only goes up to there. I have found a very long document online. 327 page uh, user manual online. So I'm hoping, oh good girl darling. I am hoping I can figure this out. I need to turn on some of the settings that I turned on once in my old camera, things like the auto horizon level, because that way when I'm setting up my tripod, there's like a, a little like a spirit level thing that pops up on the screen. I can't remember how I did that. There's got to be a way to do this. What's it even called? Horizon? Horizon? Level? Electronic level? I'm looking through the index now. Look. What is it called? Electronic level? Electronic horizon something? And help. I need help too. Mummy needs help too. Let's unbox the microphone, the external. Now let's unbox the external microphone that I've got to go with my new camera and see if I can actually get it set up. Unbox. 
unboxed all of these bits, but unfortunately, yet again, the instructions are literally just that much safety type instructions. So I'm gonna to have to look at the instructions online. One of these attaches to me and the other one attaches to the camera. Now you can use this cold shoe bracket, which means you can stick stuff on using this tripod. But I've actually got, because it was recommended on the Think Media YouTube channel, which is really good for tech and stuff, um, this U-Rig bit. But the benefit of that, if you look underneath, I can now still access the battery compartment even with the tripod on, which is massive really, because the number of times I've had to change my memory card or change my battery, you've got to take the whole thing apart. So this U-Rig thing basically moves the tripod to slightly off center, which is actually super helpful. lighty up stuff it is it is doing lighty up stuff so in theory the sound quality should be just as good from all the way back here as if I'm all the way up here I would love to okay is this working Zara just show everybody what you got wearing I mean when toddlers dress themselves eh is this working is it working is it working is it working I guess I'm not gonna tell until I set them, I get back to the computer and is that right? Is that how you set up a lav mic? <laughs> I feel like suddenly I've got all the gear and no idea. new camera sound test now. So this little mic is not plugged in, so I'm going to go further back in the kitchen and my audio should sound different, I'm hoping. I'm hoping the audio sounded different. Now, I'm now going to plug in this little thing, which is attached to this little thing, which is attached to this little thing. And I'm going to plug it on here. I'm gonna stick it on the side of the camera and we're gonna do a little test to see if this external microphone makes a difference. We're now switching to external mic. Is that making flashing? That's making flashing. Okay, now I'm moving back. Can you hear me? This should be the same, even though I'm way back from the camera. This should be the same level of audio as if I'm right up here. Is it working? Now I am recording from the Rode Video Micro. So if I unplug, we just do, this is just unplugged, this is just camera audio. Camera audio, camera audio, camera audio. Thank you, darling. And then if I plug in this big fluffy thing on the side, now we are using the Rode Video Micro. We're using the Rode Video Micro. How does it sound? Now this is a test with the fluffy one on one side and the wireless go on the other. How is the sound, whoop, how is the sound doing? How is the sound doing? How is the sound doing? Totally running out of time now. I've got to go and pick up for third school run of the day. I'm going to go and do all that and talk to you guys when I have dubbed them all. <laughs> and I can sit down at the computer and we can go through the footage and I can see the difference in the new camera and the audio and things, but also share with you my process of how I actually put the videos together. Back from school now, the children are in with my husband and I'm just gonna try and squeeze a little hour in of work. My first job will be to transfer the footage. So I shoot footage on these little SD cards. I keep them in these little SD card holders which I will link below. Basically, I call the SD card a color. 
So this is purple and I call it the size. So this is purple 64 and that goes in a purple case. And then I have the pink one, I have the yellow ones. I have various different colors of um, SD cards. It is handy to have more than one SD card. So you can kind of have one that you plug into the computer to work on and one that's in your camera that you're filming on. So I'm gonna transfer obviously the stuff from the camera I'm filming on now and the stuff from my new camera. And that will go into my computer. I work on a MacBook and it's raised up on a stand like this because that way my eye level is level with the screen so I'm not kind of hunched over. And then I've got a separate keyboard and trackpad and this is to stop me basically having a bad back. So tucked under here, I have got my hard drive. So this is my raw footage. So I transfer the information, the footage basically from these SD cards onto this big external hard drive. This is mostly because I take so much footage, it would just totally clog up my computer. Let's pot transfer the footage onto this hard drive and I'll show you what I do with it. This is my hard drive with all the raw footage and my Final Cut Pro libraries, which is the um, software that I use to edit the videos. And over here, this is the memory card I've put in. So this is the footage I've taken today, including some stills. So what I do is I rename that and I do it the date backwards because that way it all files in order. So 2010, 09 and then I call it whatever I'm going to call it. So then we're going to call that uh, behind the scenes part one because there will be more than one uh, folder because I've used a couple of memory cards. So then we're going to go over into the raw footage. I guess with a vlog. So these are all the different types of videos I do that I file, file the raw footage and then I'm just going to create a new folder and we're going to call that the date backwards, 2020, 10, 0, 9. And we're gonna call that just behind the scenes, not part one or two. Now this isn't the sort of finished name of the video. This is kind of a working title. And then we're just gonna copy that across to there. And I'm gonna repeat that process for the other memory cards I've used and dump those files from the various memory cards as I put them in and pop them into this folder and then when they've all transferred into there, I shall import them into Final Cut Pro, my editing software. While I am waiting for that stuff to copy across, um, I'm gonna have a think about the title of the video. Now, there are a few things that tell YouTube whether they should show a video to someone or not. So obviously there's search, there you go, that ping thing means it's finished copying. So there's search, so obviously if you're typing in a certain search topic, so things like my cloth nappy series and things come up in search, if you're searching for how to use cloth nappies or how to wash cloth nappies and things, that's kind of quite a searchable thing. But most of my traffic from my YouTube channel comes from browse, so what I have to do is go into videos, the analytics of videos that have already done well and see which kind of things are doing well, which kind of videos people are watching of mine. And then if I make more of those types of videos, then YouTube will show them to people because they kind of see it's like a safe bet, thinking, oh, well, if they've watched this and they liked it, then they'll watch something else of mine and they'll like it. It's worth me choosing titles and things based on what's done well before, but equally I don't want to get stuck in the rut just making the same kind of videos over and over. So what I do is I use a software called Morning Fame, which I'm going to show you now. This is Morning Fame and what I do is we do, we're going to do some keyword research. By the way, sorry for this, but it's a bit boring because if I'm honest, it is just a bit boring. Um, I just kind of want to give you guys an insight into what it is I do. So if you want to just like skip ahead through this very boring editing bit, or if you are interested, or if you want to just, you know, come back in another video because this bit's boring you to death, then I won't be offended. 
whatever, whatever you choose to do, I won't be offended if this is not really what you're into. And I'm not gonna be yammering on about programs and um, editing and things in other videos, but a lot of people have asked about it, so just just bear with me for this video. I'm not entirely sure this is exactly how you're supposed to use it, but I just skip to number three, and then I type in what I think I want the video to be about. So I always put Mummy of Four UK somewhere in the title, and that isn't necessarily because I want people to search Mummy of Four UK, although that is something that happens, but it tells YouTube that it's like a set so if someone has liked another video with Mummy Before UK in it, then they'll show them this video. So even if they've watched a grocery haul or something else or a different type of vlog, it might suggest this video for them to watch as another video from my channel. So I know I want that in there somewhere, but the beginning part, I'm thinking maybe behind the scenes of my YouTube videos. So behind the scenes of my YouTube videos is a search term because it's popping up there. So we have a look at the competition. Basically, we want these to be as close to A's as possible. And then these are the other videos I would be competing with. I don't know, that's quite a competitive search term, but it is kind of what I'm talking about. So we will, we'll, we'll take that, we'll copy that to clipboard. And then also what I'm doing is unboxing the Canon G7X Mark. I could either put Mark three so i'm going to put iii and then it was actually called the vlogger kit there we go that's actually the one that i've got there we go now that is a much more competitive title so i've got a chance of kind of ranking for that so i know like you guys watch my channel probably my, my normal audience wouldn't be that interested in that but it might bring some people into my channel who are specifically searching for that type of video so if i stick the word unboxing and then I'm gonna see if I've got enough space to write Mummy of Four UK. I like I like writing chatty vlog because I feel like that's what it is. You're allowed 100 characters in these titles. That's what I'm gonna call this video, I think. So it's competing against a variety of other types of videos, but I feel like that's a good representation of what the video is about. Then in here, I have to write the description. Um, which includes these keywords and then we have to write tags which also go into the video and then I will save all of that information for once I have finished editing. And then I always make sure that the video title that I've ended up choosing, I rename my file in Final Cut Pro, which I'm about to show you now, the title that I've chosen because that's another signal to YouTube about what the video is about, apparently, and helps with the algorithm. It's all about the algorithm. So if you ever wanna help, you know, one of your favorite YouTubers, like hopefully, hopefully me, um, liking really helps. Watching to the end of the video really helps because it really is a signal to YouTube that, you know, you like the content and not clicking on and off. And commenting, even if you just drop an emoji in the comments, that is a massive, massive help. So I know um, a few of you said that, you know, commenting for the first time, um, I'm a silent viewer but really commenting on youtube videos is the biggest way you can probably support your favorite youtubers because it really really helps them grow their channel okay, so i'm going to select all of that we're going to make all of that up the case and we're going to go into final cut pro which is this one down here and then we're going to drag all of this footage into there but the problem is this footage is not necessarily in the right order we're going to create some files over here so then uh, what i've got i've got what well, these are called final cut pro libraries i have one library for each month so we're going to go into october which is the one we're in and then i'm going to create an event so the top tier is called a library and then under that it's called an event and under that it's called a project so if we were going away for example i would create uh, within the uh, library I would create something for that weekend away and then maybe if I was turning it into separate videos they would be projects within the events I hope that makes sense so I always call the events the date backwards so it's 2020 10 and this is just filing this is how I file everything on my computer the date backwards because it files it all in order and then we're going to just call it behind the scenes because this is just for me that's just for my record that's not for YouTube and then in here in the behind the scenes vlog see these are other these are other videos and things that i've filmed this month don't you just hate it by the way when you get the spinny thing 
and it won't load. There we go. So within the, this is the project. So this is going to be where my kind of video is created. That is called behind the scenes of my YouTube channel. La 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 la. That's the big title we just made up. So then what I do is I literally drag all of that into here. But as you'll probably appreciate, some of these are images, so we don't actually need those. And then some of this stuff. So I'm going to put this. This is the other footage that I took on the other camera. So this, I need to figure out where this belongs within this timeline. Next thing I generally do, bear in mind I haven't actually finished editing this video, but what I will tend to do is I will, as I'm filming through the day, I will drop the footage into the timeline and start editing. So I generally have the same little titles and things that pop up over the screen. So I will just copy and paste them from another video and get those in there and I will sort the intro and then I'll kind of work my way through the footage from beginning to end, trying to kind of make it neat and tidy. I do need to choose a piece of music to go with this video. And for that, I use, I use this website, which is called Epidemic Sound. I will link this below. And I just have to choose some music. Just a case of, so maybe that kind of thing. Um, I've got certain artists I like within this. This is a subscription that I pay for, but it will not get me demonetized. If you just use like chart music or something on your YouTube videos, you're gonna get into trouble. Um, so using stuff from Epidemic Sound is safe. I just need to pick something that's kind of the right vibe for this video. That could work. Now, obviously, by the time you get to this point of the video, you know which song I've picked because you've already heard it. I quite like that one. Maybe we'll go with that one. I've just done it. It's now the next day, and I'm today going to look at which order I'm going to put out some of my videos and just talk you through the logic behind what's going on with that, as well as how I plan them. And then we're going to look at editing and uploading tomorrow's video because today, the day I'm filming is Saturday. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is ready for that. I don't think people realize how much is involved in the whole process, not just filming it. I think people think you just, you know, film a YouTube video, bung it up and it's done. But there's lots of sort of faffy bits you've got to do in order to tell YouTube what to do with your video and where to show it to people. And if you don't do those bits, then it's sort of a bit, a bit of a waste of time putting all the effort in filming the videos because no one is going to see them. Before we get into that, I did promise I would talk to you about lights and tripods. One of the first lights I ever got was one of these and it's called a ring light or a diva ring, whatever you want to call it. You charge it via, I think, is that mini USB? It's a wire that comes with it and the other end goes into a USB socket or into, you know, your iPhone plugs or whatever or your computer. So that clips quite easily onto your phone and it helps bring a little bit more light. Obviously, you've got to make sure you're not covering the camera um, or if you're sort of doing selfie mode, then you can clip it onto your phone. So um, if I'm doing things in lower lighting, I often have one of these in my bag if we're going somewhere. But what I ended up doing before I bought my camera, my original G7X Mark II, I was using my iPhone because iPhones are really good for photos and filming things until you get into poorer lighting. So what I did before I had my camera, I got one of these. Now, this is a bigger ring light or diva ring, diva light, whatever you want to call it. And it really does help to brighten up your face. I did buy this because it's actually um, just comes with like the bulb. I bought this as like a diffuser um, to put over it. So as you can see, if I am facing the window, then obviously I've got a natural light here. But then if I've got the ring light, that really lights up my face. Another point I'm going to make, this is something I didn't realize until I started doing YouTube. I am looking at you in the camera in the lens here, but I can see myself in the screen above. Now, if I'm looking at myself in the screen above, it looks like this. I'm talking to myself up high up above, but you can see my eye line is wrong. And some cameras have a flip out screen to the side. You'll notice some new 
like newer YouTubers especially, either looking like this up the top all the time or looking out to the side over here. And that's because they're looking at themselves on the screen. So if you are ever thinking of filming yourself for YouTube or anywhere else, make sure you are looking where you're supposed to be looking and not at yourself in the screen. The same goes for if you're filming yourself on an iPhone, the camera is actually over here, but your face will be here. So if you're looking here, not here, it's gonna look like you're looking like this and it's gonna look strange. So these are the two main things I use for lighting. On to tripods. The very first tripod I ever had was this one. Cheap, basic, did the job. A bit rickety if I'm honest, but certainly saw me through my initial sort of start on YouTube. I then bought this bit that went on top. I now just use this tripod for when I am filming Instagram stories and things. So if I'm filming like the all sped up speed clean bits, then I put my phone in it. And the children actually use this tripod for when they're doing their Zoom lessons as well. And when I bought my original G7X Mark II, someone recommended one of these. This is a Joby grip. And the idea is you can like attach it round things and stuff. So when I first started filming, I'd like hook this around the bottom of my banister. My camera then did fall off a few times. It's not idiot proof. So I like the idea of it being able to grip onto things. But a few times I got it to grip onto things and still it's ended up because the camera was quite heavy. The other issue I have with this is it's, it's quite hard to level things and sometimes, see I'm not doing it now, oh yeah, sometimes the legs come off, which isn't very helpful. So although everyone raves about those, I wasn't in love with it. Then people were also raving about these and these are much better. You pop your camera on here, you can easily change the bit at the top to adjust the level of your camera. So this has been my go-to tripod. I will feed back when I spent a bit more time using the one that came with my new Canon camera that I unboxed yesterday. So far I'm really liking the new one, especially since it comes with this remote control, so I can start and stop recording with this. So I like that I can take actual photographs remotely and start and stop the camera. So that's all kind of cool. My main tripod I use at home for if I'm filming a sit down video or a speed clean or something like that is this one. This one's got loads of different kind of adjustments and things on it. I'm, I could spend ages just talking about this actual tripod but I'm not going to. Let me know by the way if anyone wants me to do a more in-depth video on any of the points that I am touching on in this video because I am aware I'm kind of skimming through things. Anyway, I've linked all these different bits and pieces that I use in a blog post which I will pop into the description below if you are looking to pick up any of these bits and pieces for your own channel or indeed just to sort of take photos of your children, etc. Right, now let's have a look in my Airtable, which is where I plan out my YouTube content and see which order the videos are gonna go out in to see which videos you're gonna get to see first and therefore which videos I need to finish editing first to get uploaded. Just before we jump into Airtable, I just wanted to say that I'm liking my office at the moment as a backdrop. But this here drives me mad. So whenever I shut the door, I can see all my airing cupboard bit. So just from a YouTube point of view, and it probably doesn't even bug you guys, but it bugs me when I'm sitting there staring at the edit. So I need doors for that, like a big sliding door. If anyone knows where I can get one of those, well, I don't know, b and the only place I can think of. It's not like really wanna go super shopping at the moment, but anyway, as an aside, I need to sort that out. So taking a look at my air table, you can see here we've got the videos that I am thinking about putting out in October. If you go back to September, you can see all the videos I did put out. Now, obviously I put out videos Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday at 7 p.m. Make sure you're subscribed, ding, ding, hit the bell to be notified when those videos go live if you haven't already done that. So basically I've got to decide, today is the 10th. I've got to decide which video is going out tomorrow night. Now I've got an extension update I've been filming, which is some, I've done something a bit different to the way I normally put together videos on that one. 
Um, when we were doing the home renovation before we lived here, I used to just come here once a week because obviously I wasn't living here, film an update once a week and to show everyone what we've been up to. Now this video is a little bit different because I filmed a lot of different pieces, bits and pieces using my little GoPro camera. This is an action camera, pretty robust. You can leave it out in the rain, all those kind of things, it's waterproof. So I have been filming all the digging out and the extension of things over a period of weeks with this camera and then obviously some sort of chatty vloggy bits as well. So I could put that video out tomorrow night. I was hoping to get a bit more footage and content in that video but also in that video I was putting these up on the wall. So if I put out this video that you're watching now before that video with the extension. So if I just leave it another few days until some more stuff has happened before I put that video out, continuity is gonna bug me, isn't it? Because those are on the wall in this video, so therefore the other video needs to go out before this video. Does that make sense? Are you following my thought process here, people? These are the things I worry about on my channel, which Maybe it's a bit extra, I don't know. I like the videos to make sense, so I feel like I can film a speed clean or something that isn't kind of time sensitive. I feel like I can film that now and put that in the bank, like in my, you know, pool of videos to draw on when um, I haven't got something else to put out. But something like a grocery haul especially, I really feel like needs to be timely. I think it's because I've had comments in the comment section before now of people going, oh, those strawberries are out of date even though I've put the date that I filmed it at the beginning of the video. And I suppose with groceries and things, offers might go out of date or whatever, but I feel like they have to be quite timely. I feel like vlogs have to be reasonably timely and certainly in a specific order. Um, but then, I don't know. I mean, let me know when you're watching this video. Write in the comments right now when you're watching this video because maybe people don't watch them when they go live anyway and it doesn't matter as much. Maybe I beat myself up too much about when things should go out. I mean, do you generally watch, I don't know, my videos, other people's videos when they're out or are you watching more of their back catalogue, their library of videos? I really would be interested to know that actually because if most people don't watch them live or in order then I'm literally worrying over nothing. So anyway, I think maybe I should put the extension video out tomorrow, even though if it went out a little bit later, they'd have a bit more content in it. But as it's not like a start to finish video, it's not the whole thing, it's just an update. It's not just an extension update, it's a house update. So I guess it doesn't need to have a set start and end point. And then this video that you're watching now, maybe we'll go out on Tuesday. The other thing that I worry about, um, think about, I guess, um, is, I tended to put grocery hauls out on Tuesdays and this is something else that, I don't know, not worries me, but something that I kind of consider a lot on my channel. I look at the analytics to see which videos are doing well and then the videos that are doing well, I do more of those types of videos because it means that people like them. You know, if people are watching them, then obviously you want to give people more of, of what they like. Um, and I've talked before about should I cut back on doing grocery hauls because are they a bit repetitive? Because some people really criticise them for being repetitive and I worry they might be repetitive. But then other people are like, no, no, I love them. Please don't stop doing them weekly. So I was doing this kind of what I eat in a day one week and grocery haul the next week. But then the what I eat in a day videos aren't as popular as a grocery haul. So am I just shooting myself in the foot being really stupid? I don't know. Again, these are all the thoughts that go on in my head behind the scenes. <laughs> If I'm gonna get the extension video, the update video ready for tomorrow, I need to open that up. I actually started filming that on the 15th of September and today is the 10th of October. So it spans the best part of a month, that video. Um, it's. I need to go back over it because I have actually edited bits of it as I've been going along, but, I need to go back and check it because I've not looked at it all as one kind of one piece of content. The other thing I haven't done yet is figure out the title of it because so far it's called Starting Extension Vlog, which obviously isn't going to cut it. So like I talked about yesterday, we're gonna go back into, let's see if I can just show you this as well. So we're gonna have to go back into Morning Fame and do the keyword research, 
figure out what to call that video. I want to tell people what it's about, obviously so that YouTube shows it to them and so that they'll want to click on it. So I think I used to call my other videos the home renovation series and then obviously if those videos have done well and people have watched those videos then they're more likely to watch this new one as well and it is really a continuation of that so I think that needs to be in there somewhere. So if I go back to my old videos and then I see what those were called, I've got 27 videos with renovation somewhere in the title. The most popular video at the renovation series was the new house tour after we moved in. So that's no good. I can't sort of borrow from that. Other ones that did really well would be the Ikea ones. People love a bit of Ikea haul. I know I love a bit of an Ikea haul. Uh, shopping for sofas and necks did pretty well. Shopping in Ikea, bedroom makeover tour. And then all the others kind of stopped about just that shy of 4,000 views per video. So if I get all the others said house and ho home, house and home renovation update. So I guess that needs to go in the title somewhere. I'm now gonna stop chatting and actually get on with this because if I don't, I'm never gonna get this video finished before tomorrow. I am just editing the end of this video which is the extension update I just wanted to show you how I do the end screen I've basically got a template which is here which is a 20 second clip and then I just shrink down the screen so make sure you watch till the end of this video and you'll see what I mean but I shrink down the video into that top corner and then we put kind of alternate videos to click on on the screen. So watch at the very end of this video, you'll see what I mean about that. So just need to organize the title for this vlog and then that can be uploaded and then I can do all the kind of post upload bits and pieces and then that is ready for tomorrow night. I'm now editing the part of the vlog that you've already seen if you've watched this whole thing um, where I'm picking Zara up from school. So what I've got is I've got the music that we chose earlier which I just pressed like that. But then I chop the sound off. So I remove all the sound from the clips and then I just choose which part of the clips need to be sped up a little bit, which bits need to be slowed down a bit. I film everything in 50 frames per second so that if I want to slow things down, then it can be kind of really smooth and you can get that nice effect. And I just kind of judge it really. I just judge what's uh, going to be done well. The clip where you saw and she was driving forwards Obviously, there was no one pushing her because I was there on my own. So what I did there, or <laughs> what I'm about to do now, but you've already seen, woo, space-time continuum. Basically, Smile. I've got Smile. Zara, <laughs> and I push her backwards. So I pushed her backwards. But what I'm going to do with that clip is I'm just going to detach the audio, take that off, and I'm going to reverse it. So I'm just going to go reverse clip and then now it should look like she's coming forward. See? And that's what you saw. It's just me reversing the clip. That's just a little trick I do sometimes if I can't make things work. So as I'm filming I'm thinking now, which is not what I used to do when I first started, and I think this is something I've learned, I now film with editing in mind. Like, how am I gonna put this together? Which kind of clips and shots do I need? Which kind of bits of B-roll, bits of shots of me doing things can I take to sprinkle through the video to make it more interesting? It does mean that the time I spend editing is a lot longer. I do take quite a while to edit each video now. I don't think I ever get a video edited in under an hour. Each one probably takes me a good few hours, especially if I was to add up all the time where I like stick this SD card in, and, like add, edit a little bit and come back to it. And I do also find that I don't, I can't do it all in one sitting. I kind of have to edit something and then go back and look at it again, say, is this any good or is it rubbish? And I can't see my mistakes. It's the same with my writing. I can't see my mistakes. At the time, I kind of have to go back and then they become more apparent to me. I'm not sure how much of this has been helpful or interesting. Um, let me know if you have found this helpful or interesting and if you'd like me to do something similar again. 
and if so which sort of aspect of what I do would you like me to cover I have tried to include a lot of it but obviously I do so much and there's so much that's sort of the behind the scenes process that I do I couldn't possibly cram it all into one video and this video is already really really long so thank you so much for watching especially if you've watched all the way till now all the way till the end I'm very impressed you're still here please let me know in the comments that you are still here very grateful for that if you want to watch my latest video it's just across here and another video you may enjoy from my channel is just down here I'll see you guys soon